I've been here for eight years now. I became just working for a CNA, taking care of people because of my grandmother and grandfather. I took care of them as, uh, I really wasn't into hospice because I, I'm a very caring person. And once I get close to a person, it's kind of hard to lose them. So I didn't want to do hospice because I felt like they just like come on and die. Right. But once I got educated and I learned, it was different. Oh, I'm what? actually, I'm very glad that I did come. Because I've learned a lot of the death process and grieving and just I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm really I'm really thankful that I did come. My favorite part of my job is to see that I bring happiness to someone's life at the end of their life. I have a lot of patients that actually came on that was so sad and afraid of dying. But once I told them, you know, hey. You got to live life to the fullest. Just live your life. Don't worry about dying. We all have to die. I just, I, I like to bring joy. I don't like us to focus on I'm dying. I want them to still kind of live as much as life as they can. I honestly get close to a lot of them. And it's hard not to when you is all they depend on. You who they think of every day. So the hardest part will be losing someone. I had one patient, um, she had a son, she never had a daughter, and she was so full of life, like, she was amazing, and all she just wanted was to feel loved, and feel wanted, and still wanted to be around, she wanted to keep me all for herself, she would find things on the weekend to just say, can you come and do this, or she'll say, I want to go shopping, can you go shopping with me? So sometimes I will go on series with her just to go because she had never had a daughter. So I was like consider her daughter and she was my mama. So I, I really miss her. I have this patient while well, I had him when I first started. He was like um, 101, I believe. And he was from the army and he was a colonel. Well, he had this itchy problem on his skin where he would always itch, but nobody could never control it or never find out what was wrong. And so when I first started with him, he would never let me give him a shower. He would really holler, scream, run away, all kind of stuff, something. I want to try to get him to the shower because I think if he can get in the shower, the water will wash down and it won't just be more of a wipe up or a bed bath. Mm -hmm. So one day I said, Colonel. I told him, I said, it is an order that you go in this room, and we're going to spray you down with this stuff. You're not going to be itching anymore. For a year and a half, they could not get him to shower. Because any time to get him to do something, you just tell him that it's an order, and then he'll do it. So from that day forward, when I walked through the door and said, shower time, he go, I got a procedure to do. I'll be back, you guys. <laughs> and he would go get in the shower every time with no fight. I, I really choke up when it comes to like videos and speaking in front of everybody. Like I'm very shy and people don't think that because they're like, you're our spokesman. You always speak up for us or you're always saying something. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't realize how much encourage I have to build up to do that. I am relaxing if I can. I love water. Any kind of water, if it's swimming on the boat, watching the water, watching my fish tank. I love water. Like, I could be in water all day, wrinkled and all. It don't matter. I get this much time or me time. <laughs> and I also add a glass of wine to that. <laughs>